Welcome to Frequency Bone Summer Music Connection 14. This is video 7. And I'm going to combine certain things with a master class that's coming up in a couple of days, August uh, 28th. That's a Sunday. And it's um, from the monthly master class series and that I do every month at the end of each month and because of certain situations I have to put it on a Sunday instead of Saturday and it's at 11, 11 a.m. EDT and it fits in with the overlay system in another kind of way of looking at it. The master class is called Adapting to Change. Now we know, those of you who have lived on the planet for any particular amount of time, um, that could be 15 years old, it could be 55 years old, it could be older, it could be younger, somewhere in between, we all know change. Now some people have had to make really huge changes in their life. Certain sudden things um, can happen that create change. There's a natural change as we keep getting older. And there is, oh, I just moved house. That's a change, right? And, uh, oh, I'm going to a new school. Or I'm going into my next grade at school. Uh, I'm moving into another apartment. Uh, got another car that I'm not quite used to yet. Uh, I used to drive a car, and now I have to get back on my bike because gas is so high. Uh, there's so many different changes. And we can put those changes into a couple of categories. And a great mentor of mine talked about the known unknown and the unknown unknown. For... We know that tomorrow will happen, okay? So that's a known. But we do not know, totally, even if you're a great astrologer, totally what's going to happen. You might know some tendencies, but you might not know exactly the way it's going to play out. So that's the unknown aspect of a known aspect. And then there's the unknown unknown, that which we is not written in our schedule. You know, there's an old Jewish saying that goes, when God, no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I was going to say the complete reverse. Um, when man makes plans, when humans make plans, God laughs. So, all of a sudden, all different changes come up, right? And some very unexpected ones. Some can be an unexpected, joyous thing that changes our life. Oh, we just got another job in another country, and woo, woo, woo. And it pays more, and whoops, the reverse happened. Just got laid off, and right? And we can all... Imagine different kinds of positive and negative sudden things that can happen that can alter our lives just like that. So we put those into the unknown unknown for now. And there's even things way beyond that. So there's ones that are human created, ones that aren't human created. That's a big topic in itself. But the human being was designed to adapt to change. For it's always growing. Right? It's always growing. And so the challenge for the human being is it can get trapped in an ideology, um, in some kind of orthodoxy, um, whether it's a political one or even a religious one, 
and it turns into rules instead of it being a living, breathing, pulsating awareness of oneself and life and knowing that certain principles can maintain themselves and then those can move with change but still in principle and in essence be the same like the laws of nature. They might change a bit okay or they seem like they change a bit for example if it's dry outside let's say a fall day in New England okay nice traction on the road for the most part and all of a sudden the leaves start to fall and you know they can get a little dodgy but then if they get wet it's even dodgier let alone if winter comes along and there's ice on the ground all right the laws are still at play the conditions change but the laws are still at play something frozen you're driving over it could get slippery <laughs> right dry probably will feel more stable so these are uh, the laws at play um, and there's many different laws at play okay but they can express themselves differently and change conditions around us and in us. Okay? Um, now I'm bringing this up. It has everything to do with music and the overlay system. Because if a change happens externally, what's that going to affect? Depends on the nature of the change, depending on how personally it affects us. Now, Take weather changes, nice, tactile, practical, don't have to get too abstract to think about it. You have all these plans laid out, oh, we're going to do this, or we're going to do that. All of a sudden, something that wasn't predicted on your phone in the weather app happens. You didn't plan for that kind of timing. And you're running a little late. So all of a sudden, there's a mental thing that happened. Could get wrapped up into emotions. Oh, gosh, I make got to make a whole bunch of phone calls. Will I make my connections, for example, in travel? And your physical changes, of course. A little more anxiety, perhaps a little more adrenaline pumping through you, um, and all this kind of thing unless we can keep our calm and maintain a certain level of equanimity in the midst of things we can't control. So if we have that as an attitude, that's why I try, okay, emphasis on try, um, to think, you know, life's a journey. And there is an unknown, unknown factor. There's a known, unknown factor. And I'm going to plan and do certain things and know that sometimes things are out of my hands. Now you can relate this to performing. You're going to go for this and this and you have a concert coming up and let's say you're brass playing, all of a sudden a little cold sore or a zit start, starts to form in a very unfortunate spot. Which happened to me once in a tour with the Empire Brass Quintet in 1976, right before, or on, yes, the night before we were supposed to play, and we did, boy, that was torture, in Paris, our Paris debut with the Ewald Quintet, the Etler, all these other contemporary brass quintet pieces and classic ones. And I had a thing that was like, it was so big it was ridiculous. I had a range of about an octave. And I had to like, you know, contort and figure things out and kind of play top secret for a while. <laughs> Meaning really soft and look like I was really going at it. 
Oh, it was a really torturous thing. Now, I was a very young man at that time. Maybe if I would have had a little more sane lifestyle, um, <laughs> eating a little better and other things, maybe that wouldn't have happened. But it did. And so um, there's things that happen that we don't know. Right? So if you think about a prof professional career and you think about how consistency is such a driving force that um, does it take changes into account like that? You know, um, I think in many cases it does, so don't get me wrong. But perhaps maybe they could sometimes change the program. Well, a lot of the orchestra is really tired and not feeling that great. We're going to do this. And of course, people are coming to hear Mahler 6th, and all of a sudden there's, you know, Mozart and uh, a light little overture on the program, and, you know, or a great soloist is meant to come in and they get sick, right? So everything is thrown up in the air. So how's the overlay system come involved? Well, how do we handle that change in our attitude? in our trying to be even-minded so our emotions don't get too out of control and our physiology doesn't get too under control, too out of control, out of control. We want it as much in control as possible. We all know it's difficult, okay? So let's just put that aspect on one side and talk about the Adapting to change in a, in a few other ways. How about for brass playing, an embouchure change? Now, I'm sure many who would watch this video have gone through an embouchure change. I certainly did. Oh, I didn't want to, but I was very young and being... I'm going to nail everything all the time. I don't care if it's 10 hours a day that I'm playing, which I was when it happened. Recording all these quintets with the Empire Brass Quintet and coming in and playing pops and just still nailing it out, not backing off at all when I could have very easily just really laid back. And it went, bleh! I woke up one day, I was like, nothing here, nothing. Now I'm talking, not talking about my teeth right now. Talking about, which is the case, but I'm talking about really the corners went. Now, I got known for a certain sound and a certain volume contrast. All of a sudden, that was gone. I didn't have a first overlay to depend on. Therefore, every habit every habit associated with that setup <laughs> fell apart. So I had to really go, okay, started from the beginning and uh, I got to be very masterful at, find, masterful at finding the embouchure of the day. But at the same time, I knew I had to find something that could turn into a dependable structure, one that was even better than the one I had before, even if I lost about 20% of the depth and volume that I had before on my sound, okay? Um, which I probably didn't need to tell you the truth. Um, and just have a whole different thing going on. That affected my approach. 
I had to find other ways. I remember Bolero for the first time. I had to play it totally differently. First of all, I woke up in that, that morning and went, okay, I have a range of a third. And I started warming up at 8 o'clock in the morning, no rehearsal, um, which was good. <laughs> Just had the concert. And I played it in a way and found something that could work for it. And it was... Uh, just really this sweet, lyrical, more Dorsey-like, never played it before. And a lot of people wondering, who's playing that? A lot of people liked it much better. And eventually, that's the way I started to play it. And feel it more like, is that a ding dun 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 dee 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 da 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 dee da wah? Like I used to do. I wake up the next day, I have to start from scratch. And that went on for three years. But something was starting to form, okay? So I just brought that little snippet up because everything in me, my attitude had to change. I had to think about music differently. I had to find other ways. It was a fantastic gift. It was just a heavy price. But I certainly know a lot of things because of it. And I always, always was already open and looking at different embouchures and helping people with things. And this was this really jacked that up about twenty times. So that's a whole story in itself. But now, take if a student comes to me and I'm looking at them, going, "Okay, something has to be adjusted." I don't recommend, even if I feel there needs to be an embouchure change. I don't always recommend it. If I feel that that person, okay, doesn't have the mental strength, the determination to put their emotions, their feeling of loss on one side, to actually be able to take it up. And so I work with people in different ways to kind of Giving, by giving exercises that start to encourage a different formation. And sometimes they get caught within two. And then eventually, if they're patient with it, a whole new system will start to form. That's worked for several people, okay, over the years. Some people, some people depending on the situation, if it's an injury, I say, look, you've got to do this. And depending on the nature of their injury and what kind, we use playing in a very therapeutic way. I don't believe in laying, laying off for long periods of time um, in general with, with an embouchure change. More like, okay, wait, let's find the can-do points and let's work from there. I'm saying it very simply. But... When you're making a physical embouchure change, you're making a systemic change. A systemic change, especially if it's a very good player. Do you want to take that chance? Maybe they can't get that other embouchure happening. Okay? If they don't really want it and want to go through the work and the time and the ups and downs and realize the light at the end of the tunnel will be big. So, um, the overlay system is engaging in almost everything that we do. Is a person mentally, is there a second overlay that maybe has an ego, ego attached to it, ready for an embouchure change? Because the ego is going to go through. Whee! And depending on how strong of an identity you add with, with a particular kind of sound, that's going to be really difficult if you have to change it. And so your sound isn't the sound that you used to love and have and got a lot, a lot of attention for. Now, some people have a very difficult time coping with that. I realized, wait a minute, there's many different kinds of sounds. 
and you start to find other things and other aspects of the art you would not have found, which affects your whole overlay system. And your third overlay takes on a whole new meaning. Your emotions take on a new meaning and expression. And perhaps you get into subtlety more. And you realize perhaps there's different kinds of power. How much can we make the most of what we have? There are many different kinds of unknown gifts, <laughs> like what I went through. I can think there's times in my life where some of the most difficult things that happened to me, I realized later that was a gift. That was a gift. Some are very hard to realize as a gift. Um, but you know what? It depends how much you want to continue to change in order to exist which is a much deeper core essence way of saying adapting to change. Our first overlay, our body, if something's off, it wants to right itself. It wants to regain balance. It wants to regain its equilibrium, its coordination. And if you're looking at an aging process, um, you know, it's going to happen. So if you want to continue doing certain things and you accept, well, I couldn't do that, that way like I used to do, but here's the way I can do it now. And you bring a whole other life experience and content to it. Just not the raw, you know, like the young King Arthur, you know. Pull it out, you know, pull the sword out of the stone and uh, just innocently kind of charge. You have so much first overlay behind you, right? In that youthful vigor. And you have to be a little more of the wise King Arthur. Maybe be a little more mindful have a little more economy in your energy and how you use it. And then how to even make it more potent through having it be more core, more conscious, more direct. So I hope you can see how the first overlay, a, ro a robotic automatic systems, are affected by any change we have. Okay, you move into a different house. Wow, it's a new way to work. Um, you know, things are located differently, so there's an adjustment. And for a while, you're thinking more than just acting out of your habit life. Thinking can be a good thing. Overthinking, um, sometimes not so wonderful. A natural awareness of things can be very useful. And all of this has to be found by the person themselves. With the help sometimes of other people who have been through certain kinds of journeys and are aware of the fact that not everyone's going to function like them but give them some ideas that maybe helped you. And if they're really interested, these are for teachers out there, students really interested, they will take it up and play with it out of their own deep desire to move on, to progress, to be ready to go to another level, to adapt to a change. 
And so the desire to move on, your will, is very, very key. And where is that will located? The deeper aspect of will is third overlay. Okay? Your body has a natural will to survive. Okay? Your second overlay wants to figure out things within all that. But the feeling of continuance, and listen to this, even if that continuance means, you know what, maybe you can't do this anymore in the capacity you used to do it. And maybe that's a door opening for you to do something else that your life needs for its advancement its own personal development. Maybe it's still in the same field you were in. Maybe you want to start composing, arranging, conducting, working with others, or maybe it's a whole other thing. So the attitude of life is a journey. What's going to happen next in the known unknown? And then the knowledge of there's, a no, there's an unknown unknown and how can we be ready for that well sometimes you will not be but if you have a bigger picture about life it certainly will help at least that's my experience so maybe I'll see some of you on the monthly master class in a couple days and others, I hope, just get something out of this video seven. Okay. Um, a frequency bone from a music connection, 14, the living overlay system. So, enjoy your day.